Hey YouTube, hi, how you going? It's uh, Iski here. Hey listen, I'm actually about to do a very quick repair on a dryer and I thought, hey listen, I haven't made a, um, a video of this yet so I might quickly do this. As you can see, this particular Simpson dryer here is actually, um, it's actually just testing an hour and it's looking really good. Um, but what we want to fix is this Westinghouse. This was also turning and in test mode. I normally test my dryers two or three times before I, I sell them. And uh, what happened is I actually went down. It looked like it was about to finish. It had been going for about an hour and uh, I came back up and it was completely dead. Normally when they finish, there's some LED lights still on and I think that this finished light here has normally, you know, is normally flashing slightly. And uh, anyway, that's, it's just dead. And I came up and uh, what I found was just doing a little bit of troubleshooting. What I was doing is I would push this button in and these lights would come on. I'd take my finger off and they would go out. I'd keep doing it. In fact, sometimes you hear a click and a lot of times you don't. I heard a click then. Yeah, so basically what happens, I've actually pulled the power out now but that's what was happening. So I am convinced that it needs a new switch. Now the cool part about these machines, well listen, I don't know where you buy the switches. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to get them on eBay. They'd be only a few bucks, you would imagine. Um, I get all of my switches just out of dryers that have had other problems or dryers that have been destroyed. Or, you know, sometimes you get them at the dump and they've already been pushed by the bulldozer. You can get little parts like that out of a dryer and they're always good. So I'll show you where I'm going to get mine from. And if we look up here, we got some of those interfaces. Here we go. In fact, this particular one here, this particular one here is from an Electrolux dryer. Now, let me tell you a little secret. Electrolux dryers, Westinghouse dryers. In fact, let me actually just can this. That might make... I'm not sure if you can hear me. You should be able to hear me better now. So let me, yeah, let me tell you a secret. Electrolux dryers, Westinghouse dryers, and these Simpson dryers are all exactly the same. They're identical. There's nothing apart from this part here. So the Simpsons are all manual. They're the better ones to get. They're the manual ones. The Electrolux and the Westinghouse are both automatic. So yeah. Basically, the automatic ones, the computers in them die all the time. Although, let me just tell you another secret. The Westinghouse computers, uh, Westinghouse is slightly older, but I I've, I've don't think I've ever seen a computer in a Westinghouse that has blown up or has died. Um, and I'll show you why shortly, considering we've got this Electrolux computer here. But yeah, that's actually a really cool thing. So that's interesting to know, hey, everything else, all the mechanical parts inside, if you're going to replace a belt, it's exactly the same. Simpson, Electrolux and Westinghouse. So let me show you. Let's have a good look at this. So here we have, let's actually turn it over the right way for a start. That's our power switch on the Electrolux. I can hear it clicking when I push it in to turn it on. Yep. So these are relatively easy to pull out. You can see the switch on the other side. That's the front. This is it here. And it's actually just being held in by a couple of plastic tabs there that you have to separate at least one side of that. Let me see if I can do it on camera. See how good I am. I've actually already tried. So I just grabbed this tab on this side. I'm not sure if you're seeing that. Pull that apart and see if I can pull the whole thing out there like that. Where are we? <laughs> like that. So yeah, that's the um, that's a switch. So these switches are identical in the Electrolux and the Westinghouse. So it's cool. You can see I've actually just cut the oh, and my gimbal dies. Hang on, let me just try and fix you up. Sorry. I think my uh, camera gimbal is. I dropped it the other day, and I'm having major problems with it um, balancing and so forth. But uh, there we go. Yeah, so what we want to do is basically we'll pull these tabs off. But first of all, let's actually... Oh, listen, we'll pull those off now. I'm just going to pull that one. 
and that one. Cool. Leave that Electrolux there. I'll bring you back here. Now, what we want to do is basically take this computer interface front part off. Just make sure that you unplug your dryer. And there's only two screws holding this thing in, you know, it's just one on this side. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, yep. And there's another on this side. Alright, and then all you need to do is just pull it forward from the top. Come on. Oh no, sorry, from the bottom maybe. Might, but it, is that, it's, honestly, it is from the top, but when I picked this dryer up, it had detergent all through there and it's all gone hard and gummy, so I think it's acting like a glue and I can't actually pull that off. So if I do it from the bottom this time, there you go, you can actually see some of that yeah, it's kind of gone all sticky and... Alright, I'll show you. Let's have a look. In fact, I can actually see, yeah, this switch has a big black burnt spot on it. But, um, listen, let me tell you another secret. See, this is the Electrolux dryer computer. Now, Electrolux and the Westinghouses are identical, like I said, but for one part. Can you see this part here? This is a transformer on the, the main board of the Electrolux. See how it's really small? Come on, Gimbal, you can do this. We can do this together. <laughs> Stop spacking out on me. It's doing it again. Now, can you see the size of the one? Oh, it's very difficult to do this. Let me just come down a bit. There we go. In fact, I'm just gonna take the tension off this there. Yeah, so you can see the size of the transformer in these Westinghouses. Now, the thing is, I have never in my life seen a Westinghouse computer die. It's, it's crazy. And when you look at the computers, the only thing that's different is the size of the transformers. So, yeah, it's just an interesting, it's just an interesting thing that I thought I'd tell people. But um, I'm not sure if you can see. Let me just pull this tape away. I shouldn't really let it hang on those wires like that, but it, it'll be okay. Can you see, I don't know if you can see, but that brown wire that's attached to the, um, the switch there, it's all burnt. So what I'm gonna do is set you back up here because I can't do this with basically no hands. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull this out and show you. Okay. All right, interesting. And remember, if you're gonna do this, just take some photos so you can tell which way the, it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm just gonna use this screwdriver to push this plastic tab out of the way a little bit. It just helps, there we go. There we go. See if I can put this up here. Now, can you guys see this? See that big black burnt spot on there? That's toast. That is why that is failing. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my, my donor switch. I'm basically just going to pull this brown wire off this terminal. And place it on the same terminal on my donor switch. I'll do the same thing with this white wire. And we will put that on our donor switch. And then all we need to do, 
hopefully this won't back out this camera is just push this down into there let's just there we go make sure it's in nicely seated that feels good now if I bring my finger underneath here and try that switch oh that sounds good perfect awesome so I'm just going to set you back here I'll quickly put this back together remember I removed this wire took the tension off that because it was hanging off those little wires I'll just replace that in fact I'm going to undo that and I'm going to grab I'm just going to quickly grab something wet which I'll just pull out of this dryer up there and I'm just going to clean clean this crap off here while I've got it off and the top here that'll do all right so I'm just going to replace that plug I'm just going to stick that there like that push it back grab my screw let's do this one first Excuse me, I have to walk in front of you. Just make sure these wires are... There we go, it's better. Alright, let's do this up. One, wrong way, <laughs> and this one here. used to using Phillips head drivers I just normally use a um, impact driver it's like a drill and it's done in two seconds so I'll throw that switch out okay so let's test this eh I'm just gonna plug this in oh there you go so it was already switched on nice let's Test this again. Turn it off. Beautiful. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Beautiful. So let's just continue that test and see how we go. The only problem, I thought that the only problem with this dryer was you can hear a tiny little squeak. In fact, that's not really a problem, but uh, I'll treat it as a problem and I'll actually fix that up. I'm pretty sure that's the um, that's the idler. Just probably needs another idler. I'm kind of debating whether to replace that, but um, I probably will. But uh, there you go, guys. That is how you um, basically replace a power switch on an Electrolux dryer as well as a Westinghouse dryer. I hope this I hope this helps someone. I'll catch you later. See you in the next one like, comment and subscribe. See ya.